before we get started, I want to thank all of the patrons because they keep this thing going. Any of you who's interested in taking part in our monthly Q&As, having one-on-one -on -one video lessons with me, or getting some specific content that's only posted over there, you can join the Patreon. You can also become a member here on YouTube, and I'm posting our Q&As here for members as well going forward. So if that's something you're interested in, everything is below. Next thing to check out is Collage Skateboards. That's my skateboard brand, and we're closing in on releasing our video. We've got decks, we've got t-shirts, We've got crewnecks, we've got hoodies, we've got hats, all that stuff available at www.collageskateboards.com. Let's get into the video, and today I want to talk about something that was actually brought up by one of the patrons in the Q&A, the second Q&A of November, and this question was asked about skating stairs. So this particular person was uh, trying to kickflip down, I believe it was a two-stair. And he was able to kickflip off of a curb already. And he could do it really consistently, but as soon as he went to the two stair, everything was falling apart. And my question ended up centering around kind of the different tiers when you're skating stairs, and the way that I break up skating stairs in my head, and how it's helped me to tackle skating stairs. So, what do I mean by tiers? Well, obviously, stairs themselves are kind of like tiers right but we wouldn't want to separate the stairs by each stair if we're going to assign it difficulty if we're going to assign certain attributes to it and the way that i started to do it at a certain point in my skating is basically from one to three stairs is the same tier for me um i learned most of my stair tricks basically i would go from flat to doing them off a curb, to doing them off of a three stair. And once I got to a certain point where I started to understand that the curb, the two and the three stair are basically the same thing, everything that I was feeling that was different about them was mostly in my head, um, I started to have an easier time learning stair tricks. The first trick that I learned specifically down the three stair without doing it down the curb was the backside heel flip. So all the tricks I learned to do downstairs before that, kick flips, pop shove its, um, 360 flips, backside flips, I did them on flat, I did them down a curb, and then I did them down the three stair after that. Sometimes there'd be a little drop in between there, and that's something else that we'll talk about a little bit later. But then I would take it to the three stair. And at that time, uh, so I'm probably I'm 13 and 14 years old during this period, you know, because by the time I got to be about 15, it was kind of past that I was doing tricks down seven, eight, nine stairs, at least trying. But um, I at some point realized that there's not really much difference between the curb and the three stair. And so let's talk about that before we move on to the next tier. Basically, you want to, I, I always do this. I think of gravity when I'm afraid of a doing something that's either high or doing a trick down a certain set of stairs and our whole equation for gravity, right? It's 9.8 meters per second squared and 9.8 meters on its own is a pretty high drop, right? Um, you're not going to jump from 9.8 meters on its own, and you're definitely not going to jump from what 9.8 meters is the square root of. So any, any distance that's 9.8 meters squared, you're going to fall within a second, right? So that means all of the distances that we're jumping off of on our skateboard are gonna fall into this territory. Now, obviously there's a difference because when we're going down most sets of stairs, once you get above like a seven stair, a six or a seven stair, you can't just roll off the set of stairs. You have to pop, right? Uh, and that's another thing to talk about is the ability to roll off of stairs. So most stairs, you can just roll off of them before you get to like the seven stair. And I'm talking about average stairs. The average set of stairs that you would see someone skate in a skate video. Um, it's about eight, in, each step's about eight inches high. 
and each step is a little a foot or a little more than a foot long, right? So that's what I'm gonna call average stairs. Now people like to say that East Coast stairs are bigger. Personally, I skated on the East Coast and the stairs that I skated on the East Coast, the majority of them were roughly the same size as the stairs on the West Coast. What I did find different was the roughness of the ground, which made them feel like I had to do more work to skate. But as far as the size, I didn't notice a difference with the size of most of the stairs. I did skate some stairs, like for instance, I did a cab back lip on the handrail at Western, uh, the college in West Massachusetts, normal size stair. I did a uh, Nolly 5050 on the rail up against the wall in Battery Park in New York, regular size stairs. Now the ground at both of those spots, actually the Western Massachusetts uh, college spot, the ground wasn't that much rougher. Uh, I'm, uh, but the but I also did a nollie heel for front nose slide on a rail in Boston, and all of those rails, the stairs were the same size as your average set of stairs on the West Coast. The ground was just a little bit rougher at two of them. Um, so back to my point. Uh, once you are, if anywhere from a curb to six stairs, as long as you have the right speed, you can just roll off of them. So we'll talk about the three stair. The three stair, you, when you're skating your stairs, if you're skating three stairs, the length is only that of two stairs, right? And if our stairs are roughly a foot long, that's a two foot gap. So the only difference in the way you would skate from a curb to a three stair is the speed that you would go. However, I would say that most of the curbs that I skated, they went from, they had about a foot in front of the curb that was concrete and then there was a crack where that concrete turned into asphalt. So you have to at least clear that. So I was already going the, the, the correct speed to clear at least the two stair. And I only had to increase my speed a tiny bit to clear that three stair. And with certain tricks like backside flips and frontside flips and backside heel flips and things like that, when you're doing those rotation tricks, that rotation helps you clear the distance. So you can do things like I did to kind of cheat it by going at an angle. And when you're rotating, your rotation will just clear that length. So you can go the same speed you would go to skate a curb when you're skating a three stair if you employ this. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult when you talk about tricks like kick flips and heel flips because they're straightforward and you have to pop straight. It's also different when you talk about nollie tricks you because Typically, when you're skating any set of stairs, you need to go a little bit faster for nollie and fakie tricks since you're popping from what's in front of you. And you have to kind of scoop forward, meaning you have to pop earlier so that you don't pop and then push yourself over the stairs before your tail or your nose hits the ground. However, most of us will be able to handle this pretty easily down a three stair, provided you're not like going to stairs too fast, too soon. And I would argue that if you don't have a reasonable amount of control over your flip trick, like if, you, if you're if you doing kickflips and you try 10 of them and you're not landing five of out of that 10 and you're not able to have the proper technique, squat, pop, lift your knees up, wait to land, land with your knees bent and crouch a little more to take the impact, I don't think you're ready to be skating stairs yet. Now you can be skating off of the curb because there's not much impact from the curb at all. There is more impact from a curb to a three stair, obviously. And if you're not able to suck up to take that impact when you're skating on flat or off the curb, you should wait until you're capable of doing that to go up to the three stair. But within reason, anything you can do off of a curb, you can definitely do off that three stair. So when we get to the next tier, we're gonna talk about the four five, and five stairs, right? Uh, those four and five stairs, and I'll say six stairs too, just depending, right? Depending on where you are in that range and if you are skating that rougher ground because if you're on the average concrete, right? Which a lot of the concrete out here on the West Coast is coated a certain way, so it tends to be a little more slick and it doesn't take as much of a chunk out of you. Uh, there are definitely exceptions to this, like where I learned to skate most of my stairs at Hollywood High, 
the, gr the ground on the five, six, and eight stairs was completely terrible. It would rip up your body, it rip up your boards. But if you're skating on the smoother ground, the six stair is gonna be in the same tier as the four and five. But if you're skating on rougher ground, I put that six stair up there with a seven and about an eight stair, right? Um, so once you move up to this tier, you're gonna have to go a little bit faster when you're skating a four and a five stair. Uh, you're definitely gonna have to be able to suck up to land it. And the other thing is you're gonna have to start using your the skill that I talk about where instead of trying to pop upward, you're popping outward. Now you don't have to do this with every single trick because you don't have a, a, that much of a distance to fall. But let's say you're learning tray flips down the five stair and you've already been doing them off three stairs, right? You're gonna wanna do that tray flip in a way that pushes it in front of the stairs instead of pushing it up because it's really hard at what the stage you'll be at when you're tray flipping a five stair to do your highest tray flip, catch it, and then wait to go to the ground. You're gonna end up catching it and pushing your legs down because a lot of beginners, when they're doing flip tricks, they do the flip trick and as soon as they catch it, they try to push their legs to the board because they're not popping in a way where the board comes up to their feet. That's why when certain people do tricks, you hear the pop, you hear something while it's flipping and then you hear the catch. That's because they've they're able to create the right amount of pressure so that the board flips and comes up to their feet instead of them having to push their legs down so their feet meet the board you're not you're usually not going to be at this stage when you're learning how to skate a five stair so you're gonna have to learn how not to fling your board up so high and to try to push it out in front of you when you're skating that five stair also you're not going to be able to get away with going very slow when you're skating even the average five stair because you're gonna have to, unless you have a lot of pop. If you have a lot of pop, then you can go the same speed you go for like a three stair when you're skating a five stair. I know because I have a lot of pop and I learned I can get away with that. Uh, I didn't know that I had that much pop when I was learning to skate because I hadn't mastered manipulating the skateboard yet. So I had to learn just like everyone else and go faster to skate a five stair than I would now. Um, but when I was acquiring all the tricks that I can do now, so when I was learning like to cab flip downstairs, half cab flip, you know, nollie frontside flips, nollie frontside heels, nollie backside heels, nollie backside flips downstairs, that's when I realized kind of that I had a little more pop and that on certain tricks, like the nollie backside flip would always get tangled up between my legs and feel awkward. And I would go really fast doing it because my friend Marcus, who did nollie backside flips all the time and did them pretty well, he would go fast to do his. So I was kind of mimicking him at first. And then I realized that my pop was different and I could get away with going a little slower, which allowed me to focus more on how I was popping and where I was popping in relation to the edge of the stairs. And then I was able to do the nollie backside flips. Also realized that since I could pop high, I could fling slower and let it flip slower. So I had kind of more control over what was happening. Um, but that's your five stair height. So most people that are skating a five stair, unless you don't start skating stairs until you're more experienced than the average person skating stairs does, they're not going to have enough pop and control to go as slow as they would for the three stair down the five stair. So this is where you start to speed up a little bit. And this is where you want to be really paying attention to crouching down when you land, because not crouching, isn't going to throw you off the board yet but it is gonna to start to take a toll on your legs. So now we'll talk about the next tier, which is like six, seven stairs, six and seven stairs, and, and, and eight stairs can kind of be in this territory as well. But I kinda, of, depending on how long the stairs are, right? Like if the stairs are a little bit longer, like if they're closer to that 18 inch length area, so a foot and a half, then I put the eight stair up in the tier with the nine stair, but if not, if it's the average length and it's smooth, you can put your eight stair in the same tier as the seven stair and with the rougher six stair. So when you get to this height, this is where you're gonna start to feel it when you bail, right? Especially when you're young. Personally, these days, if I skate a six stair, down a six stair, I don't really feel the drop just because I've done so much of skating drops and gaps in my time skating. But 
if you once you get here, when you first get to this this point, it's gonna feel different. It's going to feel like you're in the air a little bit longer. If not, and if not on the sixth stair, then definitely when you get to that seventh stair, it's gonna feel like you're in the air a little bit longer. But this is also where you reach a strange point, right? So you if once you're skating a seven stair, you're if the stairs are like the average length, you're at a height where you can kind of you don't have to go too fast to clear the stairs. So it's a little different from the five stair, right? Because you're up so high, like now you're up at like waist height when you're at a seven, waist height for me, I'm six foot one, uh, when you're on a six and a seven stair. So that's a pretty decent size drop. So the gap of seven stairs, which if they're a foot long each, it's about a seven foot gap. It's not that far in relation to how high your gap is. It's probably about four, four and a half feet high, right? Um, so now you can kind of start to figure out like the perfect speed and not really worry about clipping as much. When you get to the eight stair though, you will have to worry about clipping. So that's why the eight stair is kind of in this point in, in this tier and it's kind of out of this tier. But in the, there's a kind of a big difference between an eight stair and then the nine and 10 stair tier. So I kind of still put it here. It's a little bit weird. You guys will understand what I'm talking about once you start doing this more, right? Um, but what's significant about this tier with the rougher six stair, but definitely the seven and eight stair is you are going to have to have to squat more and you're really going to have to pay attention to not popping too much higher than is necessary because if you do it's really going to feel like you're in the air for a long time and you might have like primos and stuff like that happen to you quite a bit that i experienced this also certain tricks like the tray flip the tricks that spin and that spin 360 degrees this is where they get harder for some reason this is where it starts to feel like you lose control of the tray flip. That's at least how I felt. I had to really work hard to keep my tray flip from once I caught it over rotating a little bit uh, when I when I at this height. This is also for me where tricks like varial heel flips got difficult. Varial flips, not so difficult because varial flips, if you can do them well, they're one of the easiest tricks to control down gaps. I don't know why. But it's a trick where I could not do varial flips all the time and then I could just decide I wanted to do one one day and just do it. That's how it always worked for me. Um, this is also where the nollie tricks, the nollie forward tricks. So actually your nollie back heels, nollie backside flips, tricks like that. The difficulty is not going to increase much at this tier. But your straightforward nollie flips, once I got to like the seven stair, that's where it got real like hard. And then and the and the eight stair, that's where it got hard because now. You have to go much faster for these tricks to clear the distance because you're popping off the front and back of your board. And it's the same with the fakie tricks. So you have to go faster and you got to pop even earlier just to make sure because you're going faster. So you might actually have to pop your nollie trick like half a stairs length in front of it instead of just a couple inches in front of it that you could get away with from the five stair all the way down. That's really what's different about this tier. This is also for me where I kind of tap out with ollieing, where I ollieing up, where I've ollied a seven stair, but I could never ollie the seven stair and be upright enough rolling away to not put my hands down. So I never got to use the footage. There's like a video part I had where I tray flip nose slid this hubba and I 50 50 up the hubba. I also ollied up that seven stair, but I couldn't roll away upright because as thick as my thighs are, I have to lean a weird way to pop high enough to get up there. So when I landed, I'm kind of slanted and I couldn't get away, get away from doing that because just because of the size of my thighs. So I always put my hand down, never use the clip. But that brings us up to the next tier and this is what I call the real tier. So nine and 10 stairs, maybe eight stairs if they're a little bit longer, if they're a little bit rougher. This is where you're gonna see these sets of stairs in people's video parts. You know, and like the best skaters on an eight and a nine stair, they're only going to have either tricks in a line or they're going to have something more difficult. Like they, someone will put a cab flip down an eight stair in their part because a cab flip is just a very difficult trick. Someone's going to put a nollie big flip or a fakie big flip in their part, even at this eight, eight, nine, because they're just really difficult. 
Um, but yeah, this is like the eight and nine stair tier. And this is where you're in real skating territory. But this is where it's not so high that you're going to bruise your heel, right? And everything from the follow from the tier before is going to be true for this one. But the other thing is where you had to increase your speed for the nolly and fakie tricks, you're going to have to increase your speed for this tier as well with the eight and nine stairs because uh, you're going to have to work harder to clear that distance. And also you're going to definitely have to suck up to take this impact. Now, it's not so bad that you'll throw out your back if you land with straight legs. Most likely you won't. I never did. But you will feel it a little bit. And so you really want to pay attention to how you're crouching and everything like that. Your rhythm is going to matter a lot more. Like where you catch the board so that it doesn't feel like an eternity in the air when you land. This is where you really learn that. And you really don't want to start trying tricks. Like you don't want to jump. Like so, some people might jump from skating a, a curb and a two stair, <coughs> excuse me, straight to skating a five stair, right? They never do anything down three and four stairs because it's not in their area or whatever. They might go straight up to like a six stair, but you definitely wouldn't want to jump straight to this height because it's going to feel like a world of a difference from a three, four or a five stair to this one. You want to get in the six and seven stairs once you're up to the eight and nine, um, <clears throat> so now we're going to go up to 10, 11, and this is where, you know, basically any trick besides a basic kick flip that you do down knees or a heel flip. So like you could put it in your video part, especially if you're like, if you, when I would learn a new trick, uh, if I could do that trick down a 10 stair, then I really felt like I got it. Like when I finally cabbed a 10 stair. I was like, oh man, I really have caballerials, you know, 10 and 11 stairs really don't feel that different from each other. Um, the only choice reason you would choose one over the other is if, you know, your 11 stair was your 10 stair was too long, right? Doing that trick down an 11 stair that's average is going to be easier because you have more height in relation to the length. But this is where you really have to know how to do your tricks to land them down this height. Like if you're not doing seven out of 10 of these tricks on flat ground, you have absolutely no business trying it down a 10 or an 11 stair. And if you've never done it down a seven or above, I wouldn't just jump to this. I'd go find like a little seven stair and then work and then work your way to a 10 or an 11 stair. Cause this is where you can try a trick once and land on your heels and bruise your heel. This is where it starts to get hard to land. If you stiff leg, it's going to throw you off the board. This is where you loose truck people. You're not going to be able to get away with it. When I was skating, actually nollie back healing in 11 stairs, what made me tighten my trucks up to medium because I was landing on every single try and I couldn't roll away. And I finally realized this because of wheel bite. Back then I skated, I was sponsored by Venture and I would let the Venture highs be the way they came. So they'd end up extremely loose. And I was landing on every try of this and I'm not a small guy. And I, my palm ended up like twice its size after the first session. The second session, I t realized what was going on. I tightened my trucks up to medium. I put wax in the wheel well and I think I did it in like 10 tries. Um, but I had Nolly heels down. I'd been doing them down fives, down eights every day for years. I'd even done a line kick flipping up a five stair and Nolly back healing down an eight stair right afterwards, the ones at Hollywood High, which I'm probably going to refilm actually because uh, Brian Hance, who filmed that, got his camera stolen by this idiot uh, right after. I filmed that trick and another line where I pop shoved it up the five stair and then switch pop shoved it down the eight stair after it. And so I never got to use those clips. I never even got to see the clips except for in the viewfinder of the camera because it literally happened later that day. So I've been thinking about refilming either one or both of those tricks. But yeah, I've been doing so many nollie heels. That's why I was able to do it down that 11 stair. And once you pass this 11 stair height, now you're into like big boy territory. Anything over a 12 is big boy territory. Don't let anyone tell you differently. This is where like you're it, like if you try too many, if you bail too much, your trucks break. If you land the wrong way, 
you crack your board definitely. You're not going to get away with anything unless you're really, really lightweight. This is also where you have to be comfortable going fast because you cannot skate a 12 stair going slow and definitely not a 13 and 14. This is where you really want to reserve this tier for when you're a lot, a lot better of a skater. Like, you know, you go kickflip your 12 stair, right? And being able to kickflip a 12 stair is really setting a bar. I remember when I could finally kickflip the 12 stair and pop shove it and back 180 and all that stuff down the 12 stair. I knew like I was getting to a point and that I just had to be patient and I'd be able to get all my tricks down this big stuff. Like, And then at, at some point it just got to where I was back threeing, switch big spin and switch big heel and uh, 12 stair. And I could kind of eat it up. But that took a lot of work and a lot of patience because it's really dangerous at this height, right? Um, and you guys have the benefit of skating in a time where stair counting is not as big of a thing, right? If you do something down a set of stairs and it looks like a good set of stairs, it's filmed well and you look good, then everybody's going to be cool with it, right? So you don't have to go out and do everything down 12, 13, 14 stairs. Like there was a period where the big stair chomping was really everything and everyone was counting stairs in people's video parts. I never really was, but like that was kind of a thing. Um, this is where it like, you really have to be confident in your skating. If you're going to skate 12 stairs and above. Um, and there's a big jump after like 16 stairs. Cause like 16 is like really big, but it's like reasonable. Most tricks can go down. But once you cross over to that 17, 18, you really only see very basic tricks down these. And that's just because it is a tall task to do any trick on anything over a 17 stair. I only ever ollied an 18 stair. That's the biggest set of stairs that I ever ollied. And I never did anything further than that. Now, usually you don't see people that are six feet and above, or you don't even really see people that are like 5'11 and above doing tricks downstairs like that. Obviously, there's Andrew Reynolds, but he had like infinite resources and is the owner of Baker. So, you know, you're able to take considerations that the majority of skaters can't once you're in this territory. And he's just a phenomenal skater who wanted to push himself. So that, but it's very rare um, that you see anyone above a certain height skating these stairs. You do see taller people skating rails. That's because rails... It's a lot easier to skate than stairs, to be honest. It seems scarier when you're in the beginning of your skating because, like, you're on this thin thing, obviously. But I'll tell you, rails are much easier than stairs. And I figured that out at a certain point, and I just went crazier on the rails. I would get the stairs in. Um, and then now you can get into a territory that I have no experience with. Like, I only ever skated a rail that was, like, 20 stairs or above. I never... I never jumped down anything bigger than a 20 stair. Um, I never had any intention of it either because once I got to jumping down like 16 stairs, that hurt. Um, I did try some tricks down the Hollywood 16, like nollie frontside 180 and stuff like that. I think I might've tried a couple nollie heels. Um, but when I got to that point, really I tapped out and I could only skate the rails because just my big body even when I was smaller and I was only like 175 pounds, that's a lot to be throwing down a, a 16, 17 stair enough times to get a flip trick. But yeah, I thought this would be helpful to some of you guys um, because it just gives you an idea of what you're getting into with skating stairs. And also, I'm the type of person where once I'm able to contextualize things, right, once I can put these things in their own tiers and understand what I need to do in this tier, what I should do to get to this next tier, it facilitates my growth. And I have a suspicion that a lot of you guys might be the same and those of you would benefit from this video. So if that's you, thank you for watching and I hope this helps you with your stair skating journey. I hope it helps you uh, helps demystify what it feels like to skate some st sets of stairs and what it's going to be like on your journey of skating stairs. And for those of you that don't, I'm sorry you watched a 20 minute video of me breaking down what it feels, feels like to skate different sizes of stairs, but hopefully you can find something else on this channel. Let me know what's the biggest set of stairs you've ever skated down 
and what trick you did down it. Let me know if you want to skate stairs or if you think that skating stairs is pointless because it hurts too much and it's a waste of time. Um, honestly, my favorite things to skate are handrails and ledges and ledges have always been it, but there was a period where skating stairs was my favorite. Another thing I didn't talk about was gaps because gaps are weird. Uh, if you find a dirt gap, right? You can skate a dirt gap that's the size of a 10 stair and people can't really tell if it's a 10 or like a 13. So a lot of times, you know, in my career, people would advise me, you should find a dirt gap for that to do it down or a grass gap because of that. And that's a hack that you can definitely use. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's hard to find a good gap to skate. But uh, thank you for watching. That's all. Enjoy skateboarding. Don't forget to check out Collage Skateboards, www.collageskateboards.com, and uh, enjoy skateboarding.